We're going to create a swarm of butterflies using geometry nodes. To begin, open Blender, delete everything. I went on Google and searched different butterfly references that we could look at. We're going to just take this one, for example, and recreate it. So I'm going to center it and rotate it. And we're going to start by just tracing this butterfly wing. It's pretty simple. I basically delete all the points except for one. I'm going to add a subdivision surface modifier, and I'm going to start extruding the shape of this butterfly wing. And I'll connect it using F. And if I need to, I'll just go tweak some of the previous points that I put down. That's the first wing, now the second one. I can just duplicate this point and then do the exact same thing, but on the bottom wing. In general, you're, you're usually looking at butterflies from a decent distance, so it doesn't need to be modeled perfectly. For this tutorial, I'm actually not going to model the body, but if that's something you need for your project, you could easily do that also. And I'm going to take this wing, the bottom one, bring it up in front. I'm going to apply this transform. And now I'm going to fill these shapes out with F. And lastly, I'll add a solidify modifier. And that's the basic for our wing. Now we need to get the texture onto here and then start having the wings flap. So the texture will be quite easy. We're basically going to create a material. I'll call it wings. We'll create an image texture. And I'll open up that texture that we referenced in our image. Now in material preview, we still don't see anything. That's because uh, the way we modeled it, extruding points, it actually has no UVs or no visible UVs. So I'm going to go into edit mode here, select everything, do U. Project from view, and actually if we drag this over, view the material preview, now we can actually see the image applied to this mesh. And I'll just tweak this a little bit. Something like that looks good to me. And now I can actually just delete my reference. So now we have the basics of a butterfly wing. And to start, we want to use geometry nodes to make it flap. So I'm going to do new here, and what we're going to do is basically use a transform node, or sorry, translate, transform node to rotate. And we can just figure out which axis it rotates on, which will be the Y. And we're going to do a, a scene time along with a sign, which is in the math node. And if you don't know, basically sine takes a, an ascending number or a changing number and it conflates it to minus one to one. So if we put this in a combine X, Y, Z, and like we said before, we're modifying the Y rotation. And now we will view the timeline and if we click play, it's flapping like a butterfly wing. It was pretty easy. We could, of course, do some extra things, like we could do a, a math node here and multiply. So if we want the wing to move slower, we just lower that number. If we want it to move faster, we increase it. Maybe I'll leave it at something like 1.2, 1.1, something in that range. The next thing we could also do is a map node. So butterfly wings don't actually flap in a perfect like 45 to 45 degree angle. So I'm going to do a map range node. And we're going to, like I said before, we're going to go from minus 1 to 1. And instead, we're going to just kind of eyeball that value to see where we want it. So butterfly wings typically fly, or when, they're, when the wings are up, they're pretty high up. And when they go down, it's pretty much 90 degrees. I'm going to just lower it a little bit. And then we can add a mirror modifier and we have flapping butterfly wings. All right, so now we want to instance this a bunch of times and create a flying formation for our butterflies. 
So I'm gonna just hide this collection and let me pause the timeline. And this will call GeoNodes. I'm still in GeoNodes. I just need any mesh to start this. I'll start, I'll just choose a plane. I'll click new. Well, we can call this flock of butterflies. So we don't need this geometry at all. We're going to use a cylinder for this example, and we're going to distribute points on face. And we're going to use this mesh, and we're going to instance on points. And what are we going to be instancing? We're going to be instancing this butterfly. All right, so is this working? It is working, it's just hard to see right now. So for scale, I'm gonna just lower it with a value node. Let's plug that into scale and make it something like, I don't know, 0.1. All right, so we can see we have butterflies. Now there's lots of ways we could have these butterflies um, flying or the paths that they take. I've tried many things before. I've made beziers at like random directions and added noise and had butterflies fly along those paths. For this, I'm just gonna create a circular path for them to fly on. And that's why I chose the cylinder because it actually instances them on a cylinder. We can then offset them and, and have them move or flutter like a butterfly would. So obviously butterflies won't all just be facing one direction. Um, so we're going to start by changing this rotation. So I could just plug this in right here. And so you can see some stuff happened. Basically all the top ones are facing up and all the side ones are basically facing outward from the center of the cylinder. So if we actually just, we, we only want the side ones here. This will make life a lot easier. So now you can see we have a lot of butterflies. Maybe I'll, I'll put this a little lower just so we can see what's going on a little better. And we don't want them facing outward. We want them facing a direction, either right or left along the cylinder. And we're gonna then have them spin around and, and animate a little bit. So to tweak this, I'm gonna do a rotation Euler. And make sure you click local here. If you don't do local, your rotations will never look exactly right. And you can see now we can basically tweak the rotations however we want. And sometimes it's hard to tell, so we want to kind of move this around. So you can see our, our butterflies are actually upside down right now. Uh, so I basically tweak these values until we have what we want. And I like to have it facing or angled upward just a little bit. And if we look from the top, they're now all facing this way. The other thing we wanted to do is have them spin in a circle. So to do that, I'm gonna add a transform node right here. And similar to the wings, I'm gonna just add a scene time. And we're gonna rotate on the Z axis. And of course I want a math node so that we can control that speed. Set it to multiply. And we want to add a combine XYZ as well. Now, if I click play, they are spinning like crazy. Let's make it really small, like 0.01. And they're spinning backwards, so I'll flip that value. And maybe they're going a little too slow. Let's do something like that. All right. Now, the main issue we have is everything looks too uniform. The colors are too uniform. The flapping of the wings are too uniform and their path is too uniform. So we're gonna go through each of those and fix it up. To start, let's make the flapping not uniform and let's make the colors not uniform. And to do that, we're gonna actually have to go back into our butterfly collection. And there's a few things we want to do. Uh, let's click geometry nodes so we can see this node graph again. So one thing we wanna do is have a bunch of butterflies that don't flap in unison. So a way to do that is to actually make a parameter or an offset that then we can access and sample from. So to do that, I'm actually going to just add another math node here. I'll set it to add. And you see here, I can kind of choose the start position or the start offset of this butterfly. 
And you might, you probably guessed, but I dragged this in right here. If I want, I could even name this value. Let's just say offset. And now it's an attribute I can tweak right here on the side in the modifier panel. And what's useful about this is now I can actually duplicate this. So you can see I have two butterflies. I can tweak it. I'm actually going to keep these all zeroed so they're not offset when we instance them. And I'm basically just going to duplicate this a bunch of times so we can have our butterflies start at a bunch of different positions. So that is the essential piece for getting them to, oh, you actually see they're all, each instance has all the duplicates we just made. So you make sure you click pick instance and separate children. Now you can see some butterflies have their wings up, some have their, their wings down. All right, so we also said the colors are too uniform. If I go again into the butterfly panel, and now I actually want to be in the shader graph, we can do a few things to make this less uniform. One, I actually think the butterflies look kind of cool with some emission color, so I'm going to put this as the emission color. We can bump up the strength to something like 11. Maybe we can, if we're an Eevee, we can add some bloom. And we can even make the background black so they really pop. So one issue here is when emission is using just this color, even the black parts have emission and we don't want that. So if I were to add something like, um, uh, I mean, there's a few ways to do this. I could do a color ramp, for example. And if I were to plug color into here, and then we view it. We basically use this as like a levels changer. And we can choose the areas we want to glow. So now that we have that, I can actually use this for emission strength. So I'll plug this in here. And let's view this again. You see, we, it's not very bright because before we had the mission strength at 11. So I'm actually going to do another math node and I'll do a multiply and get it back to 11. Of course, you can tweak this to whatever value you think looks good. In addition, uh, we want some randomized color. So I could do a hue saturation node, connect it here, the color to the color. But I want this both for the color and the mission strength or sorry, emission colors. And now I can actually tweak the color of this butterfly. And in object info node, I can take the random right here. And now each butterfly is a completely different color uh, based on providing numbers zero to one based on their instance. And I can do something like a color ramp and I could basically change the, um, the mapping based on which colors I like. So if there's only a few colors I like, I can make that, um, that gamut less wide. So instead of going from zero to one, now it's going from, let's say 0.28 to one. And that means we'll see less colors. Maybe I even want less colors than this. And of course we could tweak these a little more based on what's working and what's not working. And we can add things like contrast and whatnot to get it even more precise. So that's looking pretty good. We have basically green, yellow, a little orange, a little blue, some turquoise. Now we want the fly information to be non-uniform as well. So if we look at it again, they're all in a circle. They're flapping around. I'm going to open up this geometry node. The main thing we want to do is basically add some noise that will offset its position, but then also get it to move around and flutter a little bit. We could do this in two steps or one step. For this tutorial, I'll just do one. I'll do a set position node here. And we're going to basically be offsetting this by a noise texture. And I'll set this to 4D. And if I'll just go to the top view. So if I were to plug this into offset, you see it kind of pushes it in one direction. And the reason it does that is because noise goes from zero to one. So we actually want to do a vector math and we're going to do a subtract by 0.5. So now it's going from minus 0.5 to 0.5, which allows it to stay centered wherever our geometry node object is. 
and we want to scale this so we can actually choose the, the strength or the offsets based on what sort of path you want to create. And then if you notice, we actually have this W value because we switched it to 4D. And this will allow us to create the really cool fluttering effect that butterflies have. And like before, we're gonna do a scene time. We're gonna do a multiply. And this is gonna have to be something pretty small, I believe, so I'll plug this in here. That's it for the tutorial. If you liked the video, please like and subscribe, and this file will be available for download on my Patreon. Have a good one.